What's up guys? It's your boy Danboy, back with another video. AQ has been out for almost a month on most realms and it's time to think about the future and what kind of resistance will we need for Naxxramas. I want to put this video out as fast as possible so you guys can save gold on your materials before they get really expensive when we get closer to phase 6. And of course I want to prepare my fellow warriors for what's to come. I'd appreciate it if you throw me a sub, a like and a comment down below. It helps me greatly and it keeps me going. Every comment, like and sub means a lot to me and um, I appreciate it a whole lot. Before we get started I have one quick favor to ask you guys to help me grow even further. I have recently joined a one-stop community on Discord which can help you with all your needs inside the WoW universe, ranging from classic to retail. You don't have to follow the retail stuff if you just want to stick to classic or the opposite. The Discord is called World of Work of Titan, as you can see the logo on the right here, together with the Discord link down below. I would appreciate it a lot since this will also help me grow even further since I'm featured on this Discord. Thanks in advance guys, I appreciate it. So, what boss do we need frost resistance for? The second last boss in Naxxramas called Sapphiron, as you can see here. The big bad skeleton dragon. The reason we need frost resistance for this guy is because he has a aura that if has a 100 yard range. Which affects every player and ticks for 600 frost damage every 2 seconds. And of course, this ability is partially resistible. You can't outrun it or anything. Hence why we need the frost resistance. But, as always, we can't say for sure how much HP Safarin will have yet. We don't know if it's going to be like Huhurin and AQ40. But there is quite a difference between the two bosses here. Huhurin only has the AoE effect at 30% HP and down. Where Safarin has this aura from the get-go till he dies. And the soaking on Huhurin only affects 15 people. Where Safarin's Auras affects everybody in the raid, 40 people. So this is going to be an intensive healing fight. But, of course, there is a balance again you need to find within your guild. The more DPS you have, the faster the boss will die, the less the healers have to heal. But if you get more resistance, of course, it's going to be a longer fight, and the healers will still have, will have to heal less, but it's going to be a longer fight, so they need more mp5, they need to have more mana region and so forth. If you would like to go more into detail with the strategies for this boss, I have linked down in the description a strategy guide, boss guide for Sapphiron from Racerisks, a really decent guide which goes into detail with everything. Anyway, let's get into the details. I've created a expensive of course the best frost resistance gear set you can make for your warrior as a DPS warrior. And I've made a cheap one that you can get from craftable greens and drops in instances. So the first gear set we're going to look at is the green one with some craftable BUEs, some engineering trinkets. And this is the worst of the sets. I will of course compare the two in the end so you can sh I can show you the difference between the two. But let's get into it. Helmut Wrath gives you 10 frost resistance, plus you can get a 10 frost resistance enchant on this. You're going to be using this in both sets. We are of course going to use some items, so we have 6% hit cap. So we hit all our yellow abilities for maximized damage. Hence why I used Onichi Tooth Pendant, Congress Baldurs, Onslaught Girdle, Chromatic Boots, Don Julius Band, and Striker's Mark. All these items give us exactly 6% hit that we need. As for the frost resistance gear, you can make this icy cloak. It gives you 11 frost resistance and of course enchant it with 5 to all resistances. You can craft frost saber tunic. That gives you 18 frost resistance and you of course enchant this with 100 health. Chill hide bracers are actually a drop from Stratholm gives you 15 frost resistance and we're gonna get 9 strength on this to get a little bit more damage. Frost Saber Gloves gives you 13 frost resistance and is a craftable as well. 
As for weapons, I've taken the BIS weapons, most normal ones to have by phase 6, Chromatic and Tempered Sword, and Maladath Rune Blade of the Black Flight, and like mentioned, Striker's Mark for the hit. And then we're going to be using two Gyro Freeze Ice Reflectors. These are not that cheap to make, but they give you 30 thrust resistance, which is really nice. The Judas Band again for the hit. And then we have a Nax Ring that you can get once phase 6 launches. It gives you 25 frost resistance and 15 stamina. Really decent. This way you do not have to buy any expensive green frost resistant rings. You can of course if you want to. And if you need more than 155 frost resistance in your guild. Chromatic boots with minor speed on of course. Radiant Leggings with a CG enchant for the extra stamina, which gives you 18 frost resistance, and Onslaught Girdle. This set gives you almost 4200 HP, it gives you 700 attack power, around 15% crit without Berserker Stance, and 155 frost resistance. This is an overall decent set, but it's not the best set you can get. Obviously, you want as much DPS in your frost resistance gear as possible. And it is advised, we don't know yet for sure, but to have 200 frost resistance without buffs. This one is lagging a little bit, you could of course add a green ring, but again you're gonna gimp your damage, so there is a balance again here we have to find. As for the epic sets, we are going to use Lionheart Helm, Great Helmet of course, you can use Barb Choker, Congress Baldurs, we're going to be using Glacial Cloak, we are going to be using Icy Scale Breastplate, this is a male piece we can craft, Icy Scale Braces as well, the reason why we're using these two is they actually give you more attack power, but you lose a little bit of frost resistance. The same goes for the Icy Scale Gauntlets, again they give you more attack power aka more DPS, but a little less frost resistance. As for weapons, it's the same, Chromatically Tempered Sword, Malvath. Here we're going to use Striker's Mark to hit our 6% hit cap. Then we're going to use Diamond Flask, Black Hand's Breath, Quick Strike Ring to get even further DPS stats. We're going to be using Ramal Ramalatni's Icy Grasp, the quest you can get when Nax Ramas launches for Frost Resistance. Chromatic Boots with Minus Speed on for hit again, of course. We're going to be using Ice Bane Leggings with CG Enchant and Onslaught Girdle. This gives us 4800 HP, almost 4800 HP. A little bit less defense, doesn't really matter with DPSing, but it gives us so much more attack power. We have 890 attack power in this gear, which is pretty amazing. And we have almost 19% crit. On top of that, we have 184 Frost Resistance, which I think is a pretty good aim. Of course, remember my videos, my guides are always just a guideline for you to find out what you feel like using. This is something I will be using. I might change a little bit when, once we get closer. If I find another piece that I prefer over some other piece, maybe you want to use Drake Fang Talisman and then you want to use different pair of shoulders and a different bow, for instance. But just remember, this is just a guideline for what you can do. It's not what you have to do. Anyway, let's compare the two sets. So the green set versus the epic set, of course. You get 640 HP more from the epic set. You get 1100 more armor. You get five less defense, doesn't matter. You get 200 attack power more. That's actually around 30% increase from the green set. You get 3.4% more crit. Same hit, of course and you get 29 more frost resistance. When I look at this, I'm definitely gonna go for the epic sets. No doubt about that, it's pretty obvious, right? Anyway, we are going to have a look at what it costs to make the green sets in craftables and what it costs to make the epic sets. And I will give, provide you with some sheets so you can calculate for your own auction house prices on your server as well, of course. So to calculate the different costs of these two item sets, I have made one for the green set here, 
where you can see all the materials required up here. You can see the cost of all the materials here in the next one. And down to the left here, we have a auction house pricing. So these are my current values on my server at this current time. And as you can see, the set only cost 167 gold right now on my server, very cheap. To use this, you need to go to files. You need to make a copy and then you can change the auction house pricing down here to the left. And then you can find your price on your server at this current time. And 167 gold is pretty cheap to be honest. As for the Epic set, it only cost on my server at this moment around 472 gold. So that's not too bad. It's three times as much as the green set, but it just gives you that much better stats. And I'm sure this will help you no matter what when you get to Sapphire in phase six. Better to be prepared than not to be, right? Anyways, the way this sheet works, you can see all the materials required down here, the total amount required materials and so forth. The hard thing to get will be getting the frozen runes. You actually need 24 frozen runes from for your entire set. Frozen runes are a thing you can loot inside Max Ramas once we get inside. I'm not quite sure about the quantity and how many you get each clear and stuff like that, but um, you can probably buy them on auction house as well. Anyway, to use the sheet works exactly the same as the green one. You just need to go to files, make a copy and you can use all three sheets. There is a tank set in calculator included as well down here. and. Um, they all work the same, you just gotta change the auction house prices and then you can see what the price is gonna be on your realm at this current stage. So that concludes this guide. Of course, I will be linking a link for my green set, my epic set for this sheet and for the next round of strategy guide as well for Sapphire down in the description down below. Thank you for watching. If you have any questions or the like, please feel free to throw me a comment down below. A like and a sub would also be greatly appreciated if you're into this kind of warrior content. I do also stream on Twitch, Wednesday, Thursday and Sunday from 7pm till 11pm plus 2 GMT, Denmark time. I hope you enjoyed and as always, have a damn great day.